Knoxville, Tennessee, and Thompson Bowling Arena. Welcome once again to College Basketball on the SEC Network. As the number 12 Volunteers coming off a long delayed season opening win over Colorado, face the 2 and 1 Bearcats of Cincinnati. And what we have here today potentially is a classic battle offense defense. And if you're a Bearcat fan, you hope number two gets off early and gets off all game long. Yeah, Keith Williams, the senior out of Brooklyn, New York, is an absolute beast on the offensive end. Knows how to finish with angles through contact. Has a jumper from the outside. This guy is a bucket getter. A little bit of a slow start and a win over Lipscomb and then a solid performance against a solid team from Xavier and then really lit up a strong team from Furman with 27 points. And he will be facing one of the best defenders in all of college basketball, if not the best. Eve Pons for the Tennessee Vols, the flying Frenchman. Gets a lot of credit for the amount of blocks he has, 73 last season, but it's also the amount of shots that he affects and disrupts and alters, but he also can guard one through five and do it extremely well. He can take away your point guard or your center. Keep an eye out for 35 of white all game long. Thanks for spending some of your afternoon with us. I'm Paul Sunderland, joined by former Tennessee volunteer captain and sharpshooter Dane Bradshaw. Tennessee will be in their home white uniforms last year, 17 and 14, 9 and 9. Had to deal with some injuries and some uncertainties as far as their consistency of play, and that's going to be an easy play to call. Speaking of that, number 33, seven foot center for Cincinnati, picks up his first personal foul on an illegal screen. Now let's take a look at uh, this afternoon's starting lineups brought to you by Farm Ridge. Santiago Vescovi, interesting story last year. Victor Bailey, the transfer out of Oregon. Josiah Jordan-James will get a look at the point guard position. And John Fulkerson has become one of the stalwarts, not only on this team, but in the SEC. Ball over the sideline and out of bounds. A little bit of a sloppy first possession. And let's take a look once again, brought to you by Farm Rich. The Cincinnati Bearcats starting lineup coming again off that nice win, 78-73 over Furman. Micah Adam Woods, we talked about Keith Williams, outstanding freshman Tari Eason. But who will be the second scorer when we were talking to their head coach, Dane, John Brannon. Obviously, he was help, uh, very uh, happy with the performance of Williams scoring 27 against uh, Furman. But who's going to be the second or third scorer? The big man, 33 in black, vote can be just that. His biggest challenge is staying on the court. Got the early foul. See if he can stay on the foul court. Nice look down inside. Bailey Jr., the 6'4", redshirt junior out of Austin, Texas, the transfer from Oregon with the first basket of the contest. That's the second time they've used Bailey cutting to the basket. Such a threat from three that when guys are trailing him, that leaves the open basket cut. Right now, Pons is not matched up against Keith Williams. Jumper from the outside, and Williams is able to answer early with a three. Fulkerson working against Vote. He's got to be careful not to pick up that second early foul. And Fulkerson on the fall away jump hook comes off back of the iron. Drive, kick deep into the corner and another three-pointer. Micah Adams Woods, the six foot three sophomore out of Syracuse, New York. Back-to-back -back threes. Quickly at the other end. That off the side of the iron battle for the loose ball. And Adams Woods comes away with it for Cincinnati. Williams with a look. Offensive rebound is taken. Positive sign early for the Bearcats. They have not shot it extremely well earlier in this season, and you're going to have to make some outside shots against Tennessee. They've got so many rim protectors that you've got to open up the court a little bit, make them respect you from deep. There is DeJulius now running the point. Very, very solid competitive transfer out of Michigan, and a poor possession that time by Cincinnati, and that uh, comes up with an air ball at the end of it. Well, they're going to force Williams to go behind the ball screen because they know he's better attacking the rim. So a great counter by Williams where they dared him to shoot it, and he capitalized. And then Adams Woods compliments that as well on back-to-back three-point shots to give the Bearcats six to two early lead. A really good sign for the Bearcats making some shots from outside the arc. Adams Woods answered after Williams got things started. That had been a real disappointment so far the way Cincinnati had shot the ball from distance. Hold up. 
Deion Johnson, one of the outstanding freshmen on the floor now for the first time for Rick Barnes in Tennessee. Back and down, turns, gets a couple of Bearcats in the air, and we'll get to the free throw line. We'll take our first visit to the charity stripe. With Keon Johnson, six foot five freshman out of Shelbyville, Tennessee. Great patience by the young man. Pump fake, get him in the air, two guys, and get a foul on the opposing team's best player. And not to be overlooked. I mean, Rick Barnes goes to these freshmen early. I mean, it was three, not even three minutes into the game that he brings in Springer and Johnson. So a good luxury for a coach to have is just the benefit of the leverage of the bench. And if you're not going to be ready to play to start the game, then he's got other guys that can come in, something that Coach Barnes really didn't have a year ago. Number one player out of Tennessee, and Rick Barnes now in his sixth year in Knoxville, 34th overall. And look at the uh, recruiting class for Rick Barnes this year. That is something that has certainly improved under his tenure. Tennessee ranked by several publications with the fourth best recruiting class in the country. Kentucky was first, followed by Duke and North Carolina. Both free throws up and good. On to the floor of Polis Ivanauskas, and he misses that. An outstanding transfer out of the Patriot League and Colgate. Cincinnati so far right now just living outside the arc. Every field goal attempt they've taken, I know it's very early, 16-35 remaining has been from distance. Boy, lots of contact, easy play to call. Ivanauskas on the cut by Fulkerson and Cincinnati with a lifetime left already with three team fouls. The trademark for Tennessee is getting some of these alley-oop passes on the baseline out of bounds play. You could hear the Bearcats bench yelling, lob, lob, lob. Offensive rebound taken by Fulkerson and hard break. That one rolled off of the rebound taken by Ivanauskas inside, six foot ten, 235 pound graduate transfer. Adams Woods throws up a wild shot trying to draw some contact. And here comes Ponce. Good pass into the corner. A very, very nice look that time by Johnson. Up and down we go. Unselfish play, but what a block from behind by Eve Ponds. First rejection after 73 last year. Jaden Springer just on the floor wearing number 11. And to your point, Dane, about Coach Barnes, not bashful at all about putting his prize freshman onto the floor early. Uh, and right now, the Tennessee ball is picking up where they left off last game, which was pretty good defensively, but just can't make the open shot on the offensive end yet to find a rhythm offensively are the Volunteers. Keith Williams bailed out as he tried to get into the paint. Another look at what Eve Ponds can do like none other just underway here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Get it out of here. Cincinnati and Tennessee meeting for the eighth time last year it was the Bearcats. They won it at home, 78-66. Six players gained in double figures back on December 19th. Both teams looking completely different. Uh, the baby balls, if you will, for Tennessee. Jordan Bowden no longer on their team, but so many other guys returning, whereas Cincinnati, so many of their key players, including Jaron Cumberland, a star for the Bearcats, no longer with the team. So a little bit of a rebuild right now um, underway in Cincinnati. What was your thought about Tennessee last year after having that incredible 31-6 year in 18-19 uh, and then coming back with 17-14 and 14 and 9-9. Nine and nine, the expectations were through the roof after the Volunteers had such a wonderful year preceding. Yeah, I think the roller coaster ride would be an understatement when you look at Lamonte Turner, their senior point guard, deciding to retire essentially uh, midway through the season due to his shoulder injury. Jordan Bowden slumped a little bit. Uh, then you got guys like Viscovi and Plazvic that uh, come on in in the, in the middle of the season. So the, the roster was just so fluid and so many young guys that really weren't ready for that role at that time. But again, uh, that brings the experience and it's a blessing in disguise. And what has so many fans excited about this Tennessee team is that the sophomores are so experienced. You got the upperclassmen, Fulkerson and Pons, and then you have these new freshmen coming in. Uh, not to be outdone though, 55 and white at the bottom of your screen. 
Anna Sicki, the transfer from Sacred Heart, has been terrific early in this season as a big body. Just another addition to this uh, Tennessee squad that is so deep. And E.J. Anasicki out of East Orange, New Jersey, the transfer from Sacred Heart. Not afraid to throw his bulk around. Played 14 minutes the other night against Colorado. Had four offensive rebounds and really set the tone down in the paint. Here comes Viscovi out of Uruguay. Interesting story last year. Came at midseason after, as you pointed out, the retirement of Lamonte Turner. And went for six three-pointers in his debut against LSU. Springer looks down inside, and the offense hasn't been good so far for Tennessee. One of seven from the floor. Paul, Cincinnati is showing some zone right now against Tennessee where the Vols did not look particularly well against Colorado. They got some open looks, but they missed them consistently. So don't be surprised if Cincinnati doesn't mix a little bit of those zone coverages in until Tennessee can prove that they can make that uh, open 15-foot jump shot against this zone. Mike Saunders uh, wearing number three in black on the floor now. The freshman, six-foot freshman out of Indianapolis for John Brennan. And the Cincinnati Bearcats, Brennan now in his second year after coming over from Northern Kentucky. Shot clock winding down. Johnson splits, steps back, and about a 14-footer. Very nicely done by Keon Johnson. This is so good. A freshman should not be able to do that. That's twice now we've seen him get in the lane, stay patient, make the right decision, and come out with points. Still very early, but Tennessee really needed that. They had missed their last six shots, and Ivanowski is struggling a little bit in the early minutes here at Thompson Bowling. He turns it over. Take a look at Keon Johnson, the freshman star, just gets in the paint, under control, sets his feet, a little bit of a fadeaway, and with that type of athleticism and touch, there's not much the defense can do about that. The number one player in all of Tennessee last year as Viscovi brings it out of the backcourt against Saunders. Cincinnati back into that zone, looking for Ponds in the middle of it. And Eve Ponds, the other night against Colorado, had a number of really good looks right at the nail, right at the elbow, if you will, but goes one for nine from the floor. But I also think that's a positive for Tennessee is the fact that they could play so poorly offensively in terms of shooting the ball, yet still hold a good and efficient offensive team of Colorado below 50. And that's something Coach Brandon of the Cincinnati Bearcats said, man, that this Tennessee team could be elite defensively. Pull-up jump shot by Bailey Jr. not there, and the cold shooting continues offensive rebound, and Pons can't get, the, can't get that to fall, and Anasicki already having an impact uh, getting to the offensive boards, and will give Pons and Tennessee another possession. And Chris Vogt just picked up his second personal foul, 14-14 remaining in this contest, and Coach Brandon told us that he needed to get a lot more shots for his seven-foot center. He's only made 14 out of 16 so far <laughs> on the year. You think he deserves a few more a few more looks, shoot just under 90%. Yeah, at 7-1, he does a nice job on the defensive end of just being in the way. And so uh, it's a shame to see him in foul trouble for the Bearcats yet again. Saunders quickly at the other end, kick outside. DeJulius thought about it. Floater in the lane comes up well short. High screen set by Fulkerson. Viscovi around it, lays that up. Boy, just cannot make a shot. And a sicky around the basketball, but it will go to the Bearcats. I feel like Tennessee has had more makeable shots. They just can't put it in, whereas on the other end, Cincinnati's degree of difficulty is just extremely high. But I mean, yeah, it's a little bit contested there, but that's a shot Muscovy needs to make. Uh, the prior possession, Pons misses a bunny. Uh, at this point, it's a little bit contagious, and confidence is a little, little shaken. Somebody's just got to get the lid off the room. You know, so far, Tennessee 2 of 11, and Cincinnati 2 of 9, and their only makes were outside the arc, and they were not a good three-point shooting team coming in at 23%. 
for it. Quickly at the other end, Euro step that rattles down and around and in. Zach Harvey, six foot five sophomore out of Overland Park, just on the floor for the Bearcats as they take the 9 6 lead. Terrific job by Harvey. Tennessee applying some of that full court pressure and makes them pay. When you break the pressure, attack. Fulkerson with the look, and once again, you said it, Dan, and you know this building, you know these rhythms. There is a lid on it right now at Thompson Bowl. They're both know the lids, quite too. frankly, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what it's like to have a lid on these rims? Nice make. Early on, largest lead now for Cincinnati. Remember, they won the game last year at Fifth Third Arena. And finally, a make for Tennessee. And boy, a lifetime to go, obviously, but it really felt like they needed that one from Bailey Jr. Well, nice pace to this game, just not a very efficient past couple of possessions. See if they both teams can get a little bit more confidence going. But if you're Cincinnati, you've got to love the start to this game so far, even if it hadn't been the prettiest thing. And to your point, Dane, turnovers are negligible, just two apiece. And the teams are getting good shots, as example by that. Ivanowskis too hard off the back of the iron. Sicky muscling his way down inside. Nicely defended that time by Ivanowskis. Fulkerson's been a little quiet so far. Rick Barnes not happy with the no call. Tennessee's going to have to move on the perimeter when Anasiki gets it in down there. You can't allow him to become a black hole. Cut to the basket. Not an outstanding one-on-one -on -one post player. His niche is more the hustle plays, offensive rebounds, so you've got to help him out and cut. Three. Julius looking to go down the lane. Boy, Cincinnati's getting to the rim. They've had several good chances. Neither team can finish right now. Jaden Springer pulling up in the lane nicely off the backboard out of Charlotte, North Carolina. McDonald's All-American gets in the book. I love the aggressiveness by these freshmen for Tennessee, Johnson and Springer. I mean, these guys are bulldogs. They don't back down from the challenge. They don't defer to anybody. They still play together as a team. And Cincinnati with the quick answer, heating up from deep. Jeremiah Davenport after the quick double and nice ball movement by the Bearcats. The Bearcats now four of eight from outside the arc. Davenport's a guy that shot 14% from three last year. And all of a sudden this season, he's shooting above 50. He used up all his misses last year. Nice pass down inside through contact. Close the layup. And Asiki was expecting more, I think, from Ivanowskis in terms of getting up to block his shot. Missed that one at point blank range. Cincinnati on top, on the road over Tennessee, 15 to 11. Back in Knoxville once again, Cincinnati on top now, excuse me, Tennessee, 15 to 11. And uh, outstanding freshmen we've seen already in Keon Johnson and Jaden Springer. And they're a group of very good ones around the SEC. A sloppy start for Tennessee and who comes in to kind of save the day offensively, but the Tennessee freshmen, including Jaden Springer, uh, but Keon Johnson as well, four of his points. but. Again, the, the SEC continues to recruit extremely well. And from Tennessee's standpoint and their fans, they're accustomed to seeing uh, the five-star kids go to Kentucky and Florida, but to start to see some of those choose the big orange. It's just a testament to what Rick Barnes has been able to build. And from the very beginning, Rick Barnes said, hey, everybody knows us as TJ Ford, Kevin Durant, all these great players at Texas. But we started off with the three stars. Find some of those diamonds in the rough get our program established, and then go get the five stars. And they've done exactly just that. Tennessee has been excellent under Coach Barnes in developing talent. And, you know, nothing crazy happened when we were in commercial. It was, in fact, 15-11 Cincinnati. Yeah. I knew <laughs> that was the case. Yeah, yeah just, a, just a slight technical error, so apologies on our part. We hadn't uh, lost our minds while we were away. Rick Barnes, I, I think, very, very frustrated right now. He's, seeing Cincinnati make half of their three-point shots, and at the same time, the ball is just 5 of 14. Springer hounding, Ivanowskis with it. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Step back, jump shot off the back of the iron. That missed by Davenport. Offensive rebound off the side of the iron once again. Cincinnati 
Again, four of eight from three-point range, one of seven, and a lot from on twos, and a lot of those have been right in front of the rim. That's Tari Eason, the six-foot-eight freshman out of Seattle. 3A High School Player of the Year in the state of Washington. Matriculated all the way to Cincinnati. They're excited about Eason. Got his first start last game, did not disappoint. He's going to be a star in this league. I could see him being an all-conference player sooner than later. Wilkerson has been quiet. So has Viscovi. So have all the rest. Springer has that shot rejected. Battling for it down inside. Nice rebound taken by Eason. Ivanowska is another traveling violation. That's a couple of turnovers for the big man originally from Lithuania. Well, nice contest at the rim here. I like the attack. This is another one. Josiah James, he's got to get a little bit better at finishing through contact. See if he can't get an and one. Some full court pressure by Cincinnati returning the favor right now against Tennessee. down the lane and on the pass off the foul is called haven't seen much of anything offensively from Fulkerson how does Tennessee get him into the mix I believe getting the ball to him at the high post uh, they like to run some offense through him at the high post the same way they used to do Grant Williams let him operate as a facilitator and also as a scorer uh, but right now we're looking at two teams that this is the type of product you expected to see with all the layoffs and everything else to start the season uh, but maybe not so much after they have a game or two under their belts. Uh, nevertheless, it, it has been a, a wild year, and so some of this rustiness is only to be expected. DeJulius will come back on, replacing Saunders Jr. There you saw John Fulkerson, 6'9", now redshirt senior out of Kingsport, Tennessee. Second team All-SEC last year really came on. 14.6 rebounds and shot it exceptionally well throughout the course of the year. And free throw up and good by Springer. Paul, you got to wonder, too, I mean, who on this Tennessee team is going to bring the energy within the huddle and on the court? Because this is the type of game where it's an early Saturday morning, uh, you're a little bit rusty. This is where the fans typically kind of bail you out and pick you up. And that's not available to them right now, at least not with any type of normal capacity. So somebody's got to make a hustle play and get the bench off their feet and rally around each other. Ivanowskis working inside, but Olivier Kamwa out of Helsinki, Finland, doing a very, very nice job. The Tennessee turns it over. Ivanowskis with it again. 9.30 left in the opening half. And Ivanowskis, a couple of traveling violations, and now can't find the handle, and he's turned it over now three times in the opening 10 and a half minutes. John Brandon in his second year, 20 and 10 last year, with his first season with the Bearcats, tied for first in the American Athletic Conference at 13 and five when the season was ended because of COVID. A very, very successful run at nearby Northern Kentucky. Also knows the SEC. We talked to him yesterday. He was an assistant at Alabama earlier on in his career. When he gets jobs, he does well and does well early. Evidence by Northern Kentucky and again in his first year with Cincinnati. Vescovi back on, threw it up to the rim to Pons, and Eve Pons has his pocket picked, and here comes Cincinnati. Williams has been pretty quiet, hit an opening three, and they need his offense not on the floor right now. He's averaging 17 a game. Set your feet off the back of the iron, and once again, the cold shooting continues, and this time missed by Keon Johnson. An opportunity Is that one here of the questions, for the Bearcats. Dane? What yeah, I was going to say, gonna, Dane, is, is that one of the questions about Tennessee is when you're not making shots and it happens that they don't have an inside scoring threat? I think they can get the ball inside. It's just how they've been played so far and choosing not to do the post-up options. They do the motion offense, so they don't run a ton of set plays, if you will. It's an equal opportunity type offense. And, and they've tried to get the ball inside. They're just missing some of these bunnies. Um, but right now, I think Cincinnati's got to continue to attack. They've got the pace of the game, I believe, in their favor, which is the sloppier, the better. And I give a lot of credit to this guy right here, zero and black, the transfer to Julius, of keeping things in the Bearcats' uh, favor from a tempo standpoint. And if you're Tennessee, you figure you've got to be lucky to be only down by two after you're 5-18 and 18 from the floor. If 
Cincinnati had taken advantage of some of this cold shooting, this game could be pretty problematic. Ivanauskas fallen over the end line and was forced to call. A quick timeout for the Bearcats. We'll step aside once again. College basketball coming your way on this Saturday on the SEC Network. Chilly early afternoon in Knoxville, and it is freezing inside Thompson Bowling Arena as far as shooting percentages are concerned. Cincinnati and Tennessee right now, the Bearcats leading 15-13. You're following sports. A lot of contests have been canceled, and uh, Tuesday was the first game for Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers this year. They picked to win the SEC Conference, but five games have been canceled, and some of those were very notable. Gonzaga at Notre Dame, which is having their way right now with Kentucky, and then UT Martin was supposed to be played on Wednesday after the game against Colorado, and that too was canceled. I think Rick Barnes and his staff expected some hiccups during the season, but maybe not all at once to start the year. Uh, so again, explains a little bit of the rush you're seeing for back-to-back -back game, rush you're seeing back-to-back -back games now, especially offensively for the Volunteers. Tennessee, four of 20, and Cincinnati made their first couple of triples. They're four of 11 from outside the arc, but only five of 18 overall. Oh, no. Good, hard attack of the basket. And once again, that's a tough chance, but that ball rims in and out. Jeremiah Davenport unable to score it. And the ball is all over the place. Possession arrow. Favoring Tennessee, but not a held ball. And finally, Jeremiah Davenport, who'd hit a three, finds his way to the rim. <laughs> Just like they drew it up. I mean, this is a sloppy <laughs> Draw as that the game one up, can Dane. get. <laughs> I, I, I saw better cohesion at my eight-year-old's Little League game this morning, but you got to get it how you can. And Cincinnati just staying scrappy, staying after it. Uh, again, just uh, trying to win those 50-50 balls. All of a sudden, you keep fighting, and next thing you know, you end up with an and one opportunity. This is not, not a thing of beauty by any means. Paul, Paul, when I was playing, not every game was on air. So if you played really poorly, you'd kind of look up and be like, boy, I'm glad that one wasn't on TV. There, there, all these alternate channels and everything else, there, there's no hiding now. No, so you better no bring such luxury and everything available digitally. Everything is available somewhere up in the cloud. Viscovi back on. He, like Fulkerson, have been very quiet. Viscovi looking at the three-pointer, sets his feet and buries that. Yeah, he looks a lot like Manu Ginobili to me. Just the way he, he moves and sets his feet. I know that's a, a high bar to compare, but he's a pretty interesting player from nearby Argentina, Viscovi from Uruguay. Yeah, similar passing skills as well, but a timely three-point make on a uh, busted read there offensively in the Bearcat zone. Coach Brandon was not happy about that coverage. Shot clock at five. With Julius with it, the transfer out of Michigan, crosses over, steps back, and comes up short, and bodies are flying, and that foul is going to be called against Cincinnati, and I think they got Ivanauskas. This is as clean of a look you're going to get if you're Vescovi. Just steps right in against this zone, and you got to know where your shooters are if you're Cincinnati at the top of the zone, and just an easy kick out from the post. Vescovi makes some pay. Mentioned from Uruguay, went to prep school in Australia, NBA training camp there. First game January 4th, 2020, played 19 games and was vitally important to the Tennessee Volunteers last year. Came back with a little bit different look. You, you in for that one, Dan? <laughs> I can't say that I am, but who am I to judge? But uh, <laughs> everybody had barbershop problems during COVID, but uh, I think <laughs> that, that one might have been self-inflicted. One note that wasn't, or one mark that wasn't self-inflicted to see the shiner on the right eye. Took an inadvertent elbow from one of his teammates. I think it was Keon Johnson in the game against Colorado. And no worse for wear. And Volkerson is in the book with a couple of free throw makes. Some foul trouble for Cincinnati. A handful of different players now. One, two, three, four players with two fouls. Pressure defense, and it's going to be Tennessee basketball. Good work by Santiago Vescovi. Isn't it funny how the energy picks up? As soon as somebody sees a shot goes in, all of a sudden Tennessee's now, for the first time all game, putting a string of three consecutive good plays together and see if they can't get a little momentum going in their favor heading into halftime. Johnson lobs to the rim, ball uh, batted away. Kumwa couldn't get there and put a handle on it. Saunders goes quickly to the other end. 
Ooh, Mike Saunders right. Jr., yeah, from Indianapolis. Terrific job by Saunders, the freshman. Coming into the game, doesn't play a whole lot, but when he does come in, you know he's there. He only plays eight minutes a game, but he does indeed have an impact. Exactly right, Dane. 1918 is the lead, 620 remaining in the opening half. Johnson left all alone with the ball fake, and boy, doesn't he look smooth, burying the 16-footer along the baseline. Well, the freshman mistake there by Saunders. You never leave the ball, and that's exactly what happened. Bailey Jr. leading the way. If anybody can say that, Tennessee takes the lead with five. Johnson now with four. And Jaden Springer with four off the bench as well. The two prize freshmen, Jaden Springer and Keon Johnson. Well, this starts with a really nice skip pass by Kamwa. And then as Johnson gets this, just a ball fake. But again, not so good of a ball fake that you had to run away to the shooter. But uh, that all starts with the respect of Escovi from three. They had a breakdown in coverage that left him open. And so Saunders looks at his coach like, hey, what do you want me to do? Guard the ball or give up the three? But again, you, you never leave the ball. you got to trust your defense to rotate and recover for you. You mentioned Vescovi, a six foot three sophomore, as we've talked about three or four three pointers in their opener on Tuesday night against Colorado. Here's Colorado with 23 turnovers. That's really good play at the defensive end. And the impressive performance now at both ends of the floor for Keon Johnson continues. If you didn't know on the roster that this guy was a freshman, you'd assume that he was a fifth-year senior, Keon Johnson. I mean, the way he plays patiently on the offensive end, his athleticism, of course, is second to none. But then the discipline and the footwork on the defensive end and the pride he's taking on that side of the ball is very, very rare from someone so young. Want to play a lot of minutes as a freshman? Don't turn it over and play really well at the defensive end. They can't find 12 and White for a three here in the corner. Nice play along the baseline. Pons has that shot rejected by Chris Vogt, number 33 in black. Remember playing with two personal fouls. He picked up that senseless one early on an illegal screen. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. A really nice job of him going straight up and down there. Seven foot one. I don't care how athletic he Pons is. You're going up against somebody seven foot one. It's going to bother you. And nice job by staying out of foul trouble by Vogt. Haley Jr. misses that. Expected to add a lot to Tennessee after transferring from Oregon, originally from Austin, Texas, but was with the volunteer team all last year in Knoxville. Shot clock, really good defense by Tennessee. Adam Woods, another turnover. Turnovers were not a factor early on, but that's eight miscues now for Cincinnati against five for Tennessee. You called a terrific half-court defense there. Cincinnati wanted to try to do a couple dribble handoffs, and Tennessee just blew them up, fighting through aggressively. And that's something you've got to be impressed by. Both of these teams, really, is we always say don't let your offense dictate your defensive intensity. And I think that's been the case so far this game is in terms of avoiding that despite how sloppy they've been on the offensive side of the ball. Cincinnati staying in, but still in the right spots, extending their zone. The Scoby, a little bit of a Euro step, and throws that one up and in. Never underestimate the power of a good ball fake there, and Vescovi froze that Cincinnati defense as he knifed through the lane. We've seen a couple of those from Vescovi there, and Johnson the play previously along the baseline. 9-2 run now for Tennessee to take the 22-19 advantage. Nice play. High, tough rebound by Johnson and Trapp. Pons working against Ivanowska as turns baseline and knocks down the follow-up jump shot. Really critical four-minute stretch here for the Bearcats. They've done such a good job throughout this first half. We need to make sure they go into halftime within striking distance. 340 remaining in the opening half. Now the largest lead for Tennessee after they trailed it early. 15 to 11. Cincinnati has really gone quiet at the offensive end. Get a good look there, not there, and Descobie takes the rebound. be 
through some contact. Johnson will shoot some free throws to try to cap off an 11-2 run, Dane. Vescovi has triggered this mini run. Ball fake, whoop! Got past him and a little kiss off the glass. And then dumps it into the big man. He pawns with a little turnaround jumper. Flying French. Back in Knoxville, and finally Tennessee finding some rhythm and some range in 11-2 run. Volunteers now on top of the Cincinnati Bearcats, 24 to 19. Clemson Notre Dame going to play again. I know you're a big football fan, living where you do in your part of the country. It's going to be a, an interesting playoff conversation once again. I'm pulling for Coastal Carolina. How about you? <laughs> I think they're, they're everybody's <laughs> hero these days. <laughs> One of the big stories for Cincinnati coming in, we talked about a classic offense versus defense, and Keith Williams hit his first shot from three-point range. But because of foul trouble, he's been very limited and probably won't see him the rest of the half. He picked up those two fouls. He picked up the second at the 15-15 mark. So John Brennan forced to put his offensive star on the sideline, and that has certainly helped because Cincinnati, remember it was 15-11 when we went to one break? It was 15-13 when we came back. Yeah. A little futility, but uh, uh, Cincinnati went over four minutes without uh, without scoring. Nice play once again from the free throw line by Johnson. You, you had touched on it, Paul, that can Cincinnati find a second scorer? And right now that answer has been no, because with Williams on the bench, they just have not had any consistency or flow on the offensive end. But you can't blame Coach Brandon for keeping it on the bench because they stayed within one or two points for this long of a stretch. So you you sit there and say, okay, let's save him for the second half without him be at any risk for foul trouble. And I think you stay with that game plan even though it's starting to get a little bit away from you here in the first half. Oh, Davenport from long range, and he has given some punch off the bench for Cincinnati now with 11. Well, he's the guy. He must have been listening because he has stepped up. Again, this is a 14% three-point shooter a year ago. Now three for four today to continue his hot streak to start this season. You said 14% last year? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd allow him to put that in the notes. Yeah. Yeah. Two of 14, but, you know, he didn't have too many chances, but nevertheless, he got in the gym and he deserved it. Fulkerson, and that's going to be a foul on Ivanowskis, bumping him off the block, so it'll be three throws coming. The point right now with the Bearcats are just really trying to buy time, get to halftime so they can put their star scorer in, and Keith Williams, Davenport, is keep, keeping them right in this ball game against a scrappy Tennessee team on the defensive end that has really been elite. I mean, they're, they're holding their opponent 8 of 25, just 32%. But it's been the Cincinnati three-point shots where they've converted five of those that have kept the Bearcats in this game. Focusing from the free throw line, 11 points, three rebounds in the opener against Colorado, has already graduated in sports management and recreation and moving on to his, gra to his graduate degree. Deion Johnson to the sideline. Both no, the second free throw rattled in and out. And Ivanowskis picked up his third personal foul. So that starts to mount considerably for Cincinnati as you look forward to the second half. Davenport has been outstanding for the Bearcats in the absence and foul trouble of Keith Williams. Shot clock at seven. Roll down the lane to Julius needs a bounce, and he does get a friendly bounce here at Thompson Bowling. Nice pass. Fulkerson with the floater. Fulkerson after a very slow start game, now with five points. Shot clock winding once again. A foul is going to be called on the perimeter against Santiago Vescovi. Good transition offense here. A terrific drive by James and this nice little floater by Fulkerson as he trails the play. And prior to that, Cincinnati's done a nice job with their transition defense. Tennessee likes to push it up the court, make or miss. And Cincinnati that time just could not get matched up with the trailing big.
Tennessee doing a good job playing defense without fouling, limiting Cincinnati to just one for three from the free throw line. They're in the bonus now. Looking for Boat down inside and really good active hands by the Volunteers. Springer, tough pull up, jump shot off the front of the iron and Boat takes the rebound. Three personal fouls against both post players, Ivan Auskis, and for Chris Boat for the Bearcats. We talked about Pons being able to guard one through five. He'll guard your point guard or your seven foot one big man and pick up his critical third foul for Cincinnati. They were playing with fire. They were subbing them in and out at times, and they just got to trust Boat down low when they give him the ball just to be careful. You don't have to duck that shoulder in there to get space when you're seven foot one. Turn around, try to get that jump hook without risking your third foul. He is really important for a successful season with regard to Cincinnati. Average of 11 and 6 and shot 65%. Bailey Jr. misses that nice put back. Aggressive work on the backboards once again by Tennessee. Was that Keon Johnson flying in there? I think Josiah James, the hair looks yep. similar, but that was James, five and white, <laughs> comes through there. Crafty, high IQ, another five-star kid that Rick Barnes has been able to recruit to Knoxville. Shot clock is off inside of 10 seconds remaining. Cincinnati dribbles it off his foot. That is uh, Tari Eason, the outstanding freshman, as we mentioned, from the Northwest. And with 7.9 remaining, Tennessee should hope to get a good look at it. Well, this will be interesting. I know it's not an end-of-game situation, but you're still calling your your best play for your best player in this situation. So who does Rick Barnes go to offensively with so many weapons for this Tennessee team? Springer with it. Time winding down. Floor is cleared. Right in the middle pull-up jumper. Not there. Tipped by Fultness and close. And the ball off the front of the iron. Both teams pretty quiet at the offensive end game early. But then Tennessee found some rhythm and some range, and they went out to the 30-24 lead at the end of the first 20 minutes here in Knoxville, Tennessee. College basketball coming your way on the SEC Network. Let's send it to Peter Burns and Chris Doring in our halftime studio. They'll have a lot to talk about with another big football weekend, and then we'll have first half hot highlights and stats. Knoxville, Tennessee in college basketball coming your way on the SEC Network. Number 12, Tennessee. and. Cincinnati struggling offensively, no doubt about that. After the first 10 minutes of the opening half, Tennessee trailed 15 to 11, and then they scored 19 points over the second half of that opening 20 minutes to put together a nice run to take the six-point advantage. Over Cincinnati, a rematch from last year, the Bearcats won it in Cincinnati. Second half stats and highlights when we come back. well but once again number 12 Tennessee did do a very nice job over the last 10 minutes of the opening half rebounds very close three-point shooting is really what kept Cincinnati in it particularly early on but I don't know how they deal with all the foul trouble they're lucky to be in this game in my opinion Keith Williams only played four minutes and he five minutes and he picked up two quick fouls and, and Cincinnati hanging with the 12th ranked team in the country without their best score yeah, the Cincinnati Bearcats are a different team when Keith Williams is on the court. So he's got to be cautious out there, play aggressive, because he likes to put his head down and go to the rim. On the other side of that, if you're Tennessee and you're that coaching staff, you say, hey, guys, the first person that can get two fouls on Williams gets out of sprints the next day in, in practice, because if they can get him on the bench, Tennessee balls should be in good shape. Josiah Jordan James, who had a late putback on the floor now. Fulkerson fakes, turns, and off the side of the iron. And Chris Vogt, scoreless in the opening half, a couple of turnovers to go along with those three fouls and got no help from uh, Rapolis Ivanaskis. Vogt down inside, and a blocking foul is going to be called. Boy, that is a break for Cincinnati. That would have been number four. James, they say, gets there just a little too late, has his heel. Inside the cylinder, good call. 
just the first personal foul on Jordan James, a 6'6 sophomore out of Charleston, South Carolina. A nice play once again for Cincinnati, coming right in and scoring it. Micah Adams-Woods, who hit an early three-pointer. That's a heck of a pass from the seven-foot seven center vote. Fulkerson, good matchup against both. He doesn't want to pick up another foul. But once again, both of these teams, Dane, missing a lot of shots in the paint. They have, and Fulkerson uncharacteristically now one of seven. So you got to think the length of vote has bothered him and distracted him despite him being able to get off pretty good looks. Fulkerson was a 61% field goal shooter last year. Cincinnati at two and one on the year. Nice pass, both down inside, no doubt about that one. Really good assist along the baseline. You want to know how to shoot 80% on this early season, that's it. When Vogt gets that high quality of a look, he can finish with the best of them. Hans has been quiet offensively, as has Fulkerson. Pull up jump shot, not there. Vogt with a pretty good block out and then push away. Nice stiff arm against Fulkerson. Julius, good pass inside, front of the rim, lays it up and in, nice play. To the freshman, Tara Eason, who's getting the start in the second half. There's no question the Bearcats have taken the momentum of this game, and they have thrown the first punch to start this second half. On single cover, tough fall away jump shot, boy, nicely done. Made one against Ivanauskas, and this time against Eason. Really difficult shot there. Eason did a good job holding his ground and actually forcing the big man away from the basket, but just a better offensive performance than defense that time. Almost turned over. Kick into the corner. Once again to Eason, rattles that out. Vote. Lucky not to pick up his fourth personal foul. Vescovi will push it out of the backcourt for the Volunteers. Still like to see the Volunteers swing this thing side to side. They're at their best when they get it going, ball reversal, get everybody touching the basketball. They just have not had a clean rhythm. Nice step back, jump shot right at the elbow. Really good offense that time from Victor Bailey Jr. Yeah, much better job. Five, six passes, don't be stagnant. As Rick Barnes like to say, don't let the ball stick. Everybody either move, uh, cut, pass, dribble, shoot, whatever it is, don't let the ball stick in your hands for more than one or two seconds. Or is cleared for Williams, double team, fights up through contact and not close with that ill-advised shot. Ball tipped away and a foul, oh boy. That is really an ill-advised foul for Keith Williams from behind. Picked up his second personal foul at the 15-15 mark of the opening half, sat the rest of the way and now picks up his third. Just a ticky-tack foul that he's not happy with, but you, you know, you just gotta not take the bait there. You're, you're frustrated about the shot attempt and now uh, here you are picking up your third foul, and I, I, I like the call of keeping him in the game. I, I think you keep playing him. Uh, you did your best of, of keeping it, keeping the lead low enough with him on your on the bench, but now it's second half, and you need to get as many minutes as possible out of your star. Yeah, Dan, I really agree with that. Williams, 27 points in the win over Furman and 18 against a very good Xavier team in the loss. Pull-up jump shot by Springer. Pons with the offensive rebound. Boy, does he get off the floor in a hurry. Inside shots lead to inside rebounds, and I love the way Springer can get inside and create those inside opportunities when Pons does the rest. After a quick start by Cincinnati in the second 20 minutes, good response right now by Pons and the Volunteers. Six-nothing run of their own. Out of a maximum of 4,000 allowed here at Thompson Bowling, the capacity over 21 and a half thousand. That's going to count the basket. Big basket that time by Eason. The freshman attack in the rim for Cincinnati. We've come to our first timeout. A tight one as we expected, just like last year. Tennessee on top by four. Tennessee Volunteers on top of the Cincinnati Bearcats, 36-32. And for the first time in a long while, Dane, someone other than Kentucky was picked to win the SEC. And look at that, is the Tennessee Volunteers. Well, they haven't had a big sample size so far in this season to say if, if they're worth the hype or not, but uh, they certainly looked the part. 
and they've got the depth, they've got the experience, they've got the athleticism, they certainly have, have the coaching. And, and I think you're seeing right now with the way Kentucky has struggled to open up the gates uh, that this is Tennessee's SEC title to lose. Even though they won't like to hear me say that, taking a page out of Nick Saban's uh, uh, motivational playbook, it's all rat poison. Don't listen to the media. <laughs> don't buy into any of it. Just worry about yourself. Uh, what, what are some other uh, coach speak? Uh, focus on the process. Uh, all those things, one game at a time. So all those yeah, things you beat will me be to relevant. it. Yeah. One one day at a time, one game at a time. There is Rick Barnes now in his sixth year in Knoxville, and after a wonderful run, initially at Providence, then to Clemson, and then a long 17-year stint at Texas, where he recruited beautifully. And what was the reaction? We were talking about it previously when Coach Barnes was uh, appointed the new head coach here at Tennessee initially. Uh, I do think a lot of fans felt like. Tennessee was extremely fortunate and lucky. I mean, the, the timing of Tennessee's reputation really as a basketball program after Donnie Tindall got let go and then right before that, Conzo Martin had chosen uh, the Cal job over staying at Tennessee and, and maybe didn't feel appreciated in Knoxville. So um, to have Rick Barnes and his type of reputation in Knoxville was huge. But uh, on the contrary, I do think there were some fans that said, hey, is, is this kind of a retirement gig for him? Is he still going to be in, in his prime as a coach? How many years does he have left? And, man, as he answered those questions. But, again, as I told you, Paul, before the game, I said, look, everybody felt optimistic about it. But when he was signing three-star recruits, you know, some kid out of Charlotte that he recruited over Princeton and Harvard, it, you couldn't get excited about that until you saw the product. And next thing you know, that kid happens to be uh, Grant Williams, who most likely have his jersey retired and has reestablished re the Tennessee brand at the top 25 program. Vogt with a score down in the paint on the nice jump hook. Yeah, so Vogt getting things going here in the second half. And it didn't happen overnight. First couple of years, no NCAA tournament. And then you dial forward to 2019. Rick Barnes is the Naismith National Coach of the Year, 31 and 6, SEC Coach of the Year. They are glad to have him here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And a program still on the rise with things to do. Nice steal on the run out by Williams. And that might get him going. That is his first basket since the 1534 mark of the opening half. And he averages 17 a game for them. Yeah, nice defensive play there. Keon Johnson, a little careless with the ball, and Williams so tough. Gets it out on the other end with the finish. Springer getting down inside. The foul is going to be called on the perimeter against number three, Saunders Jr. It's just defense turning into offense. Williams, that's one way to get the lid off the rim. Might have had a few words for the young fella, Johnson, who tried to come down with the uh, little bit of the LeBron chase down block. No luck. Second half so far, a little bit of mini runs, and Cincinnati really struggling in the opening half. Doing a pretty nice job here with their efficiency, thanks to plays like that and vote. Scoring down in the lane there, six or eight from the floor with Tennessee. He was three of nine so far at the start of the second 20 minutes. There's Chris Vogt, 7'1", 260-pound senior out of Mayfield, Kentucky, transferred from Northern Kentucky when John Brennan got the head coaching job in Cincinnati. Springer with a second. And a sickie going for the offensive rebound, making his presence felt once again, trying to carve out another possession. And on the held ball, the possession arrow is with Cincinnati. We'll see how they sort this out. Yeah, it will be Cincinnati's basketball. Cincinnati comes in with a record of 2-1. and one. Tennessee had to wait a long time to play. They were the second to last Power 5 school. Ole Miss was the last. I had them the other day. And they beat uh, a very good team out of the Pac-12 in Colorado, 56-47. to 47. Held the Buffaloes to 47 points, a team that I looked at the numbers. They were averaging 80 were the Buffaloes through their first couple of contests. But then I looked, bigger sample size. They averaged 70 last year, and they were hold, held to 47 by Tennessee. And as you look at Tennessee's struggles offensively, by no means is it panic mode. I think you can see the potential. And some of these guys, Tennessee fans, have already seen half success from a year ago. It's just a matter of time before they get their chemistry down. And again, they've been playing some, some very good opponents in the Cincinnati ball club that's never going to let you have anything easy. Hey, Julius working hard off the bounce, lays it up and in. I love the pace that he plays with. Just so under control, quietly has six assists in this game, been the floor general for the Bearcats, is the transfer out of Michigan. 
for Cincinnati lead since 1918. And a sickie down inside and uh, will stay at this end. A push called down in traffic. Always seems to be under control is to Julius. And that time he just takes advantage of the defender having their back of the head to him. I mean, Anasiki's not sure where the ball is. And you got to see man and ball at all times. And a nice move there and finish for the Julius. Played in a very good program, of course. Juwan Howard, the head coach now at the University of Michigan, played 31 games, solid numbers throughout, and now running the show for the Cincinnati Bearcats. And not a lot of primary point guard duties in his history. Coach Brandon has been very impressed with his ability to transition from sort of off guard supporting role into primary point guard. Lots of contact, but a traveling violation is going to be called against Tennessee's Jaden Springer. As far as turnovers, Dane, 11 for Cincinnati, 7 now for Tennessee. Julius again gets right down in the lane. Tough chance. Vogt, that's Ivanauskas with the rebound. And he, along with Chris Vogt, really struggled in the opening half. And we'll see who that foul is called on, but number 25. Rap Ivanauskas will go to the free throw line. Tennessee's done a better job this season, but they really struggled on the rebounding side of things a year ago. They, they got dominated. They did a lot of things well, but rebounding was not one of them. So that's an area that they, they've just got to clean up. And right now, Rick Barnes has a lot of depth and a lot of talent, but he's also trying to figure out, all right, what five guys can I put out there that are going to play well for me just for a three or four minute stretch? Uh, they have yet to find any type of cohesion so far in this ball game, at least to be able to do both ends of the ball. Third personal foul called against Anasiki as both free throws up and good for Ivanauskas, who had a really solid couple of years at Colgate in the Patriot League. His second year there, he was the player of the year in that league, averaging 15 and 6, and dropped off a little bit last year before he transferred over to Cincinnati. Paul, I love that drive by James. He's a guy that kind of defer, defers, uh, doesn't hesitate, but you want to see him more assertive, more aggressive. But the next step, he's got this great upper body. I think he can finish those plays for an AM1. Uh, it's going to his left. He's a left-handed guy, and, and he gets a slap on the wrist. But I think he can get up there and finish that above the rim and, and be a little bit better through contact. The win over Colorado had 8.6 rebounds to go along with three steals as we look at another, take another look at him exploding for the basket. He'll get better with time, but I, I can tell you a year from now, if not sooner, that's going to be an N1 type play for James. Tennessee now 11 of 14 from the free throw line. Cincinnati just 3 of 6. And they have pulled from outside the arc after making four out of their first eight. They've made just one out of their last seven. Saunders, wild shot, looking to draw the contact and quickly up ahead. Saunders, oh, past the Fulkerson. And that all starts with James getting the defensive rebound, the kick ahead pass. Get your offense flowing, and then a beautiful feed to finish. Ivanowskis turns it over for the fifth time in limited minutes. Cincinnati's got to clean that up. And that'll get Fulkerson started. He's had a pretty tough game so far. Two of eight so far from the floor for John Fulkerson, the returning second team all ACC SEC last year. Kick ahead to Spring. Fulkerson calls for the lob and. You'd be hearing folky chants if Thompson Bowling Arena was filled to capacity, but uh, uh, they'll have to do it on a streaming basis for now. Well done by John Fulkerson, and, and sometimes that's what it takes when you're one for seven before that, just to see the ball go through with a thundering finish. See if he Some of the going. very, very good teams and talented teams that Rick Barnes has had recently at Tennessee. He sort of took a, a, a back seat, if you will. Anasiki with a turnaround jump shot needs a roll, doesn't get there. But Fulkerson needs to be one of the key components for this team to succeed offensively and defensively this year. And he came along last year better than I ever could have imagined. And his epic performance on the road at Kentucky is, is one to be legendary at Tennessee. But he's got to follow it up now with the target on his back this season. Anasiki with the offensive rebound. He had four of them in 14 minutes against Colorado the other night. And Josiah Jordan, Josiah Jordan James attacks the rim. It'll be free throws coming to Tennessee when we come back to Knoxville.
Let's take a look at tonight's protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. When your offense isn't going, your defense better have your back, and the Tennessee Vols D has stepped up to the plate so far. So many rim protectors, including that man, Eve Pons, but he doesn't just block shots. He can move his feet as well. Picks up the charge on that one, and it's been a team effort with this Tennessee team. So long, athletic, they talk, they help, and they recover extremely well. And, and you know, Paul, I think that's one thing that hadn't been talked about enough with some of these empty arenas. As a coach, you tell your team, hey, you have no excuse not to be a great team defensively from a communication standpoint. Because there can be times when the arena gets loud and you can't hear each other and you, you just got to go with the play. You, you can't talk as well. But right now, it should be the most vocal defensive team these coaches have ever had. There, there's no excuse and much easier to hold your team accountable. And I think this Tennessee team uh, has taken advantage uh, of that environment. Pons, last year, the defensive player of the year in the SEC and maybe the most interesting man in all of college basketball, a very talented musician, also a photographer and a chef, and he's French, of course, so he should know his way around the kitchen. Now keep it to yourself, Pons. Awesome. Yeah, good. You know, make, making us all look bad. You know, there's a guy that plays the <laughs> saxophone. He cooks. He speaks multiple languages. A future pro. A couple of good-looking free throws there by James, the six-foot-six, highly touted player, as you mentioned, Dane. Sometimes, you know, you come in, you think you're going to be one and done, but he is a, a very, very solid player for Tennessee this year, probably beyond. To his credit, I don't think he ever had that mindset, even if some of the hype behind it was just that. But he has quietly put together a great three-minute stretch here defensively. There he is again, and on the offensive end. And Williams just picked up his fourth personal foul. So, you're the leading scorer, Keith Williams, for Cincinnati. Take the play, Dane. I mean, that's just a wonderful defensive play, but you can't compound matters by picking up a foul. You're right, and that's the second time this half where he's been frustrated and he has compounded that mistake with another one, as you mentioned. And so, uh, again, aside from Williams, I think Josiah James, as Coach Barnes was looking for that right mix, they put James at point guard, where Vescovi's the primary guard, even though James can certainly play it. But he's given them a, a really big boost during this three or four minute stretch. Keith Williams once again came in, averaging 17 points per game, had 27 in the win earlier in the week over Furman. Only played four and a half minutes in the opening half and then picked up two very ill-advised fouls in the second half. And, and his day, day may be done as Tennessee is now on an eight nothing run to retake the lead, 45-40. Where do you go if you're Cincinnati? I'm not sure you can exactly. rely on Davenport to, to make three more threes in a row or anything like that. So a uh, good drive there by DeJulius, but they've got to find some sustainable offense or at least try to create some turnovers to get easy buckets on the other end. The Julius at the point guard, the transfer from Michigan now with half a dozen. Vote and Ivanowskis have both been in foul trouble as well all game long for John Brennan in his second year at Cincinnati. Yeah, Vote just picked up his fourth personal foul, and he may be sitting against Williams pretty soon. A lifetime left in this game, and still very, very much up for grabs. Well, Tennessee has dominated from the free throw line. They're 15 of 18 going up on this attempt uh, compared to just three of six for Cincinnati. And in both halves now, the Bearcats have gotten Tennessee in the bonus early with plenty of time to go. And so uh, you just can't do that to yourself, especially when a team is struggling so much shooting the ball to give them these free opportunities only makes things worse. Absolutely. A nice looking stroke for EJ Anasicki, the transfer out of Sacred Heart, knocking down those free throws. Sister played for the Lady Vols previously, had a real connection to the program, was spending some summers here. So made the decision when he transferred from Sacred Heart a lot easier to come and play for the Vols. And he'll be important. Nice play out of the corner. Right on cue for you. Maybe Davenport can hit three more threes. <laughs> and Cincinnati will need it. Well, he's a catch-and-shoot guy. Tennessee's got to respect that. Make him put the ball on the floor. Davenport now with 14. Aiden Springer, re nice reverse dribble and lays it up and in. That does such a good job of getting that lane. He doesn't get out of control or jump off one foot. He's a two-foot finisher, whether it's a pull-up jumper or at the rim. 
Spring is not a great afternoon so far from the floor, but with half a dozen nice rebound in traffic by Fulkerson. Bonds on the floor right now. The coaches along the sideline directing and pushing players for Tennessee. Fulkerson right to the front of the rim, lays it up and in. But that's what happens when Vote is on the bench. Fulkerson was unsuccessful on that same shot against seven foot one. But as soon as Vote goes to the bench, Cincinnati gets smaller, Fulkerson gets better. Started one for seven. Fulkerson, number 10 in white, starting to feel it. Heat things up a little bit quickly out of the corner. Eason and answers with another three. So here at Cincinnati, Dane, a team that had really struggled from three-point range, and their coach, John Brennan, when we talked to him yesterday, said, that's not us. Well, if this is a better version of Cincinnati, they're going to like it a lot. Now 7 of 18 from three-point range, and the lead for Tennessee is only three. The visiting Cincinnati Bearcats trailing by only 351 to 48. And Dane, the three, mind you, has been a huge story for the Bearcats staying in this game when otherwise they have struggled. Absolutely. Davenport kept them in it in the first half, did a terrific job, but it hadn't just been him. I mean, other guys have chipped in. Even the freshman, Eason, has come off the bench to hit a couple, or excuse me, in the starting lineup, but he's hit a couple threes as well. So it's been a collective effort, again, led by Davenport. But 7 of 18, just under 40%, and, and you're exactly right. Not known as a very good three-point shooting team, but that's what's kept them in this game. And through the first three contests, Cincinnati was 2-1, and one, and they were 13 for 56, 23% from outside the arc. They couldn't throw it in the Ohio River. And, and how timely have those threes been the past couple of possessions? When Williams goes out, your best player with the fourth foul, Tennessee's starting to pull away just a little bit. You're looking for offensive threats, and there you come down with the answer with a couple threes in a row. Well, they absolutely had to have the game. We were talking about it during the break. It felt like Tennessee was getting much better at the offensive end. They had scored on their last seven possessions, now seven out of eight. And without those threes, Cincinnati might be looking at a double-digit deficit. Well, no surprise, Cincinnati switches to that zone. We've seen a few glimpses of it. He's going to try to Julius off the back of the iron and then gathers up the offensive rebound on his wallet. Step back jumper needs a bounce. Not there. Battle for the rebound taken by James in traffic. Ball deflected and Cincinnati's going to have one on the run out. Careless live ball turnover by Tennessee. Well, that's fundamentals right there. You just don't pick the ball up and James caught himself in a dead position where Johnson was cutting and James thought he was staying and next thing you know you get a sloppy turnover. Yeah, Johnson one of the prize freshman number 45 was solid in the opening half back on save for that turnover. Cincinnati back in the zone and another careless pass and back-to-back -back turnovers and coach Barnes is not going to be happy about those. Not the best pass. Coach Barnes is upset with it, but I believe you got to bail out the passer too. Johnson, that casual kind of hey, you one-handed catch there, that doesn't work anymore. You got to get two hands on the basketball. That could eliminate um, the, the turnover situation. So Tiago Vescovi back on the floor now. We're number 25 in white. Pretty quiet afternoon so far. Quickly out of the corner, not there by Davenport. The battle for the offensive rebound. And Ivanowskis has had a frustrating day along with his front court mate in Chris Vogt. Cincinnati hoping to get something very solid out of vote. He's been in foul trouble sitting and Ivanowskis has just struggled all day long as David DeJulius. Point guard change now made for John Brennan in Cincinnati. Just it's inside of eight short. minutes remaining. Excuse me, Paul, but for Coach Brennan, it, I, I think they're better defensively with those two bigs in the game, but I think they're better offensively with them yeah. out. And so it's, well, you, you, what are you going to say? Do? Well, that's going to be the question mark all season long. I mean, do you, do you go offense? Do you go defense? But I agree with you. You talked about the fact that Fulkerson got a pretty easy look. That's because Chris Vogt has picked up his fourth personal foul. That was on the sideline. We'll step aside.
Tennessee and Cincinnati in a really tight early season game here in Knoxville. Very streaky early season non-conference matchup, especially at the offensive end between number 12 Tennessee and the Cincinnati Bearcats with former volunteer captain Dane Bradshaw and Paul Sunderland, thanks so much for joining us. Your thoughts just of what you've seen. Let's start with Tennessee and how they've been so up and down, or lack thereof, at the offensive end. Well, the thing that's great about Tennessee is the fact that they can be sloppy on the offensive end, but they are so elite defensively so that it can bail them out at times, and they can win low-scoring affairs. But it's going to come to bite them if they don't take care of the basketball a little bit better, not be as careless and find some of these shooters. They might have not respected Cincinnati from three before the game, but they better figure that out now as Tennessee, uh, excuse me, as Cincinnati now seven of 20 from deep. Yeah, the triple is keeping the Bearcats clearly in this basketball game. Looking at last year's numbers, Tennessee allowed opponents to score 64 points, but held them to 40% in terms of field goal efficiency. To Julius back at the point. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this one. Tennessee led it 30 to 24 at the break. Wide open, Davenport sets his feet and rattles in and out. That's the easiest three he's had all afternoon. Tennessee was fortunate there because just as I said, they better respect and find Cincinnati shooters. They leave one wide open. Fulkerson double team. Good rotation defense by Cincinnati. Muscovy looked like he had a crack. Eight to shoot. Johnson trying to create some space. Tough shot and a really good defensive sequence by Cincinnati. And here comes the Julius quickly to the other end. And that ball rejected off the board. You can see the Cincinnati bench. They wanted a, a goal tank. Springer, fall away jump shot. Has that rattle in and out. going deep into the clock before they get started offensively. Harvey's hit one free, but that was a long time ago. He's number one in black. Oh, look at that. Just dribble around for about 30 seconds almost, and now Cincinnati on an 8 nothing run as DeJulius buries the three-point. A wise move in terms of just winding it down towards the end of the shot clock. Have as few possessions as possible in this game. Keep it close. Give yourself a chance to win. And if you can make one at the shot clock buzzer, icing on the cake. Heck of a shot. The ball through the hands of Pons, but away from the play. That foul is going to be called on Davenport, working defensively against Fulkerson. It's just a one-on-one -on -one play to Julius here, just the veteran. And Jaden Springer isn't used to anybody making that type of shot on him. <laughs> Uh, the freshman star, um, but nowadays it's not high school anymore. You got a guy like DeJulius, he's like, I've never heard of this kid, but let me tell you something. This is a transfer from Michigan, a lot of experience on, under him, an NCAA tournament guy, so uh, somebody you better respect. Tennessee, first points they have scored in over four minutes, and also about limiting the possessions with respect to Cincinnati. When you look at Vote possibly coming back in the game and Keith Williams, who has been a non-factor with four, if you can just play this out time and score-wise and get that them back in for the final couple of minutes, it gives Cincinnati a real opportunity. Tied at 53. On Tennessee side, keep getting yourself to the free throw line. 19 of 22 now. The Julius. That's going to be a traveling violation on the James Harden step back. You called it. It was pretty, and I don't know if it was a travel or not, but that's on the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He pawns. He's going to size up here with a little, whoop. Oh, yeah. That's some footsteps. Yeah, that was a travel. Looking, that's a good yeah. call. Yeah, if Pons is looking forward to the NBA, he'll have to figure out how to take that shot away. <laughs> that's, a, that's an NBA move right there. A very big call. Now, remember for Cincinnati, the traveling call there, and prior to that, DeJulius on the run out and the saving play that the uh, bench in front of Cincinnati was right in front of them. They thought it was a goal 10, but it was ruled a good block by Keon Johnson. Fulkerson immediately double team. Ooh, and Fulkerson missed Pons wide open underneath the basket on the double team. Shot clock at four. Bailey Sr., couple of dribbles, pull up, and with the air ball, and that might be a total bailout. 
Not a great possession by Tennessee. Bailey Jr. with the air ball at the end, but I think that they're going to get Ivanowskis for a foul away from the play on Fulkerson, so it'll be two free throws coming. And because Cincinnati has gone small now due to foul trouble, they've adjusted, and they're sending double teams at Fulkerson, making him give the ball up, and it's a good strategy, and they've gotten the half-court stop on the first attempt. It's the offensive rebounds and the box outs that are killing Cincinnati right now uh, as Tennessee continues to get themselves to the free throw line over and over again. You mentioned it during one of the timeouts. John Fulkerson's going to finish with a double-double on the day that he struggled. But he's making hay at the free throw line now. Six of seven, Tennessee. 20 of 23 overall. One of the big differences in the game. Cincinnati is only three of six from the line. Julius down the lane against Fulkerson, high onto the backboard. Ivanowskis with the offensive board. Jump hook is rejected by Pons, his second block of the afternoon. Such a smart play by Keon Johnson. That usually if you're that athletic and you're on a fast break, you're going to force the issue. That time he makes the safe play. They back it out, run clock. I go to Fulkerson, make them double team you again. Even though there's only 10 seconds on the clock. Go to Fulkerson, try to get the double team, and see if you can't get Pons wide open. And uh, speaking of Pons, here he is again, adding more shot blocks to his career total. 73 rejections last year. I had to read that two or three times. I thought it was a misprint. <laughs> Remember, he's only six foot six. Just a phenomenal athlete and has really improved his all-around game since he's been in Knoxville. Shot clock, Viscovi's going to have to step back from about 27 feet. Collins battles for the offensive rebound, and it's ruled off of Tennessee. Well, we've talked an awful lot about Tennessee at the defensive end. You've got to give some credit to Cincinnati. Short-handed and in foul trouble, they're playing really well at that end of the floor. And they're battling. They are undersized down low with the foul trouble. But Davenport does a terrific job just battling down low against Pons. They've given up 15 offensive boards, but it hadn't been through lack of effort. Cincinnati continues to hang in there. Old Tennessee with just 6 of 23 from the floor in the second half, 29% so far on the afternoon. Vote is back on. He's been playing the foul trouble all game long, and that, unluckily for Tennessee fans, goes off the foot of Bailey Sr., and it will be Tennessee basketball. When we come back, 347 left, and this one's going to go right down to the wire on the SEC Network. Number 12, Tennessee clinging to the 55-53 advantage. So early in this very strange and difficult season at times, stop and start, but this is an important opportunity, particularly for Cincinnati. Yeah, this would be huge for the resume come March because uh, not that the American Conference is any slouch. You've got teams like Houston and Memphis, but knowing where this Tennessee team is expected to go with, you can steal a win on the road early in the season against the Tennessee team. Man, will that look good on your resume. And as ugly as it's been for both teams, I'm sure that's what Coach Brandon is, is preaching, is about that opportunity, that sense of urgency, and, and executing as if your season depends on it. Because while a loss in Knoxville, a close loss, would not hurt them, boy, a win sure could help them. Absolutely, and they're doing this with Keith Williams, their leading scorer. Remember, had 27 earlier in the week against a very, very good team out of the Southern Conference in Furman. They needed every one of those to get that victory. He has been a non-factor foul trouble early in the first and then two very ill-advised fouls in the second half. Cincinnati looking to inbound, and a foul is going to be called away from the play. I can't tell if they called foul or five second. Wow, if they called a five second, that was awfully quick. Wow. That is a big break for Tennessee. Tennessee in the double bonus. Cincinnati has only committed three fouls so far here in the second half. That's a pretty remarkable number. A huge advantage, plus 18 at the free throw line. Good attack to the basket. That one won't go, but a really good look once again by Keon Johnson. The confidence that this young freshman has, but also the confidence Rick Barnes has in this young freshman late in the game to have him on the floor in this moment. 
him not shying away during a critical stretch. Again, Tennessee doing a terrific job getting to the free throw line. There have been a couple and one missed opportunities. Wouldn't be surprised at all if their next practice, they don't have the, the, the bats out and the pads and knocking guys at the glass there and making them finish through that contact. Johnson misses on the first of two free throws. So far, seven points to go along with six rebounds and now three of five from the free throw line. No Tennessee field goals in almost seven minutes. Where would they be? Hey, look, it's part of the game. When your team is in the bonus and now double bonus, you drive, you play physically, you get to the line. Even with those two misses, Tennessee is now 21 of 25 from the free throw line. And I'll say it again, an 18 free throw point advantage over Cincinnati. To Julius, another step back three, and this is that. You like that shot in that particular with time and score in mind? No, not enough ball movement at all on that one. I know you want to wind clock, but you want to get some offense going while you're driving that clock down. Boat flexing his right leg, might have taken some contact. He's matched up against Fulkerson turning around. Jump shot in the lane. Nice look by Pons. That's a shot that they missed consistently against Colorado. They got it several times, and Pons capitalizes on that one. The lead is four as we approach the two and a half minute mark. Pons now with eight. Vote. Wow, that's going to be it. That's, that's foul number five. What a tough afternoon for Chris Vogt. And Fulkerson went down hard. And, and this is an outstanding play call for Cincinnati. Look at the screen. You got Vogt wide open. If he just turns the other way, he can turn yes. around and dunk it. He, he turns towards the defense instead of away from it. And all of a sudden, it could very well be a four-point swing while fouling yourself out of the game. And you, you just got to try to have that feel. Um, Vote has struggled offensively. I think he has had a very positive impact on the defensive end. So, so the four points and the turnovers don't tell the whole story. But, but in that case, they, that's just something he's got to learn from because that, that was an easy dunk for the seven-footer had he felt the defender over the correct shoulder. A huge play and the right call, no doubt about that, with 228 remaining. Still plenty of time, 57-53. So vote is his day is done. Four points to go along with five rebounds and is fouled out. Paul Tennessee not in foul trouble. So as much as people make about starting lineups, this and that, I'm more interested in who's going to finish the game. And right now you're seeing who Coach Barnes trusts in this particular matchup to close this thing out. And Tennessee, nice play on the back cut. Beautiful pass from Viscovi to Springer. Tennessee, Dane, can be very aggressive. They can extend their defense because they got fouls to give, so to speak, is we're under two minutes. Looking for Davenport, who's had a very nice game, number 24 from outside the arc. And irony of ironies, Pons is guarding right down the lane. And that ball off of Williams, did it go off his leg? We're looking, the officials are going to talk this one over. And look at the back pick by Fulkerson. And Eason, the freshman, just does not help out well enough or quick enough. you got to be able to help and recover that time. Beautifully executed play and a terrific screen by Fulkerson. It's those types of things that don't show up in the stat sheet that Fulkerson brings to the table. Fulkerson being attended to. I think this is from the previous collision. It might have been on the screen. Tennessee on an 8 nothing run. Fulkerson getting some attention along the sideline. Thought this might have gone off of Williams' leg. So his struggles so far on the road on the afternoon. Might have been a little hold there, but that does go, yeah, clearly off of Williams and out of bounds. He is, is an outstanding player, but boys, he had a difficult afternoon in Knoxville, Tennessee. But two wasted opportunities at the rim for Cincinnati. Uh, of course, Pons was coming over, and anything can happen then, but Williams looked like he had a clear shot to the rim to at least get to the free throw line and then vote the possession just prior to that. So, uh, again, the points are hard to come by. You have to make the most of those opportunities at the rim. Cincinnati, when they least need it, goes back to really struggling offensively. No points, and now they finally get something huge at the other end. Nice play by Micah Adams-Woods. That's their first basket, first points in four minutes. There's no quit in this Bearcat team. Just scrappy and 
second time they've been able to pick up one of those loose balls around the rim and turn it into an and one. The freshman Keon Johnson, they'll be working with him. Another live ball turnover that led to an all-important basket because Cincinnati and Tennessee's in the double bonus. They're trying to extend their defense. Adams Woods completes the three-point play, and just like that, Cincinnati right back in it when it looked like Tennessee might be getting some comfortable separation. But it was a question I had for Coach Barnes yesterday. You have multiple point guards, but who is your quarterback? At these moments, you want to be able to say, get the ball to whoever and get out of the way. It was that way when they had Jordan Bone a couple years ago, uh, Kevin Punter back in his day uh, for Tennessee. You know, T.J. Ford all the way back to Texas. Who is that guy for Tennessee where they say, hey, get it to whoever and get out of the way? I wouldn't be surprised if they do it for Viscovi uh, right now, but it still is, is yet to be determined in terms of who can consistently bring that type of energy and leadership at the end of the game. We thought it was a quick five-second call against uh, Cincinnati a couple of minutes ago, and now Descobie to avoid a five-second call on Tennessee. Quickly called the timeout, and they'll talk things over with head coach Rick Barnes. Take a look quickly at the upcoming schedule for Tennessee, and obviously it's had some changes. St. Joe's has been added to the schedule on the 21st, Appalachian State, Texas Tech, and then right in to the SEC Conference, taking on Missouri. To, that's at Missouri to open things up, and then home, Alabama and Arkansas, then at Texas A&M, and at South Carolina in a very, very deep and competitive SEC Conference. I saw Ole Miss for the first time the other night. Boy, they have added some talent there. Kermit Davis going to have to make some interesting decisions because he has got maybe 11 deep on that team with some important transfers. Trying to get the ball to Viscovi here. Yeah, running the play for Viscovi, trying to get the ball into him. And the Julius is saying that he was held. They want to check the video. By my best recollection, which is always not reliable. I don't think that is something that is, that is a judgment call. I'm not sure that is re reviewable. Well, and this is a veteran move at times here where he felt like it was Springer that actually was creating the hold opportunity there that you've seen a lot of players do and try to get away with to make it look like a foul. And again, to Julius, the veteran's been around the block. He's probably done that a few times to other players <laughs> and saying, hey, man, call that. Yeah, but clearly the right call. The only good thing with Cincinnati, it happened before the ball was inbounded, so no time goes off the clock in Tennessee. Once again, finding some some hay at the free throw line and making the best of it. Now 22 of 27. Cincinnati just four of seven from the line. Sprint. And both free throws up and good. Dan, where does Cincinnati go for some offense here? Ivanowskis comes back on. Has struggled throughout the course of the afternoon. It, it would be just like them to, to hit a couple back-to-back -back threes and get right back into this thing. Yeah, but I still don't think you have to be too quick. This is a two-possession game. Get the best shot you can, not the first shot you can. Well, and Coach John Braden wants to talk about exactly that. What are we going to do over the final 128 on the road, trailing by five to pull off what would be a big upset and a real feather in their cap for Cincinnati early in this season, trailing now 61 to 56. Let's take a look at Cincinnati's upcoming schedule versus Southern Florida at Georgia at UCF. They are very quickly, as you can see, Dane, very quickly right into the American Conference play. And they should be prepared. I give Coach Brandon a lot of credit. They've scheduled tough. Uh, Lipscomb is, is no slouch coming out of the gates. They, they lost to Xavier, which is an extremely tough team, a rivalry game. Uh, they get the good win against Furman and then Tennessee under their belt. So uh, that, that is four tough games uh, coming out of the gates for, for Cincinnati that should have them well prepared for matchups moving forward. Well, I agree with you, and I think they will battle once again. They were 13-5 uh, and five in the American last year when the season ended. They were had won the regular season championship, but you've got Houston, Currently a top 10 team right now. Calvin Sampson doing a wonderful job there. Calvin Sampson and then Memphis, of course, with Penny Hardaway. I know they lost a lot, but they are very good. Best offensive player, first best defensive player. 35 in white, Williams, two in black. Shot clock at six. 
Step back, no, to Julius gets all the way to the rim and has that shot blocked. Was that Pons again that got a piece of that? It sure was, and Coach Barnes refers to him as a fix-it guy. Uh, when things break down, he fixes everything, and Vescovi's going to get beat off the dribble. This is two points at the rim until the SEC's Defensive Player of the Year comes over to bat it away at the last second, and DeJulius does everything right, winds it, clock down, last second, and then just the athleticism and wingspan of Eve Pons saves the day for Tennessee. And possession for the Volunteers with 105 left. In the double bonus. And Cincinnati looked like they tried to apply a foul. That ball deflect. Would you foul here if you're Cincinnati? Not quite yet. I'd see if you can't get one more stop here and then see if you can't create a turnover and lead to an easy basket. And especially with Tennessee not showing to be uh, extremely competent right now in terms of who's going to bring the ball up against this pressure. They, they seem a little shaky. At this point, I would not bail them out with a foul just yet. Jordan James to inbound, probably looking for Viscovi, and Rick Barnes wants to talk over exactly that. Just under a minute remaining. Tennessee 1-0 coming off a win over Colorado, Cincinnati at 2-1. Reviewing that last play where it was contested along the sideline, didn't go off with Tennessee. Or Cincinnati, we're in a, an official review. It was off Cincinnati at that first look. Ooh, maybe not. Ooh. That looks like the Ooh. left paw of Vescovi. Look at the expression of Tari Eason wearing number 13 in black for Cincinnati. After this play is over, he certainly thinks it went off of Vescovi. It's rural Tennessee, but I think uh, I haven't had as many looks as the officiating crew, but I'm not sure that's not off Vescovi and Cincinnati ball. For the second game in a row, Tennessee has really struggled from the floor in the second half against Colorado. Eight for 29 so far in the afternoon, eight for 25 against Cincinnati, shooting only 32% on the afternoon. 0 for 5 from outside the arc is Tennessee in the second half. It's, it's all about the free throw line. Been more aggressive, getting to the offensive glass, penetrating, going to the rim, and they have gotten Cincinnati in all kinds of foul trouble. And Cincinnati's helped along the way, a couple of very ill-advised fouls by Keith Williams. Cincinnati basketball, wow. No wonder Tara Eason looks so happy. <laughs> Again, ruled Tennessee at first, but a uh, nice camera angle there if you're a Cincinnati fan. And Cincinnati ball, and, and here you go. I mean, you, you've got Williams, your best offensive player, but he struggled tonight, so do you still go to him despite him being uh, not really in a rhythm? And he's got the best defender on him, but the Julius. The Julius off the front of the iron, taken early in the shot clock. Williams double clutches, not close off the side of the board, and his tough, very tough afternoon continues. I think they've liked the mismatch because Tennessee has switched a lot and had their big man, their five, guarding to Julius. And it's worked a couple times for Cincinnati, but not quite there. Cincinnati now 8 of 26 from outside the arc, really cooled off after making four of their first eight. That kept them in the game in the first half. Well, if you're Cincinnati, you can't foul now. You've let way too much time go off the clock if you had any, any thought about fouling. 33.5 remaining. Much better job against pressure there. The luxury Tennessee has is just multiple ball handlers. When you have James in the backcourt with Vescovi, it makes it really hard for the defense to create a turnover. Fulkerson with it, probably looking to drive to at least get to the free throw line. Turn, spin, follow away, jump shot. Tough chance and knocks it down, and that'll probably seal it for Tennessee. What a big make by Fulkerson. And that's why he's a preseason all SEC first teamer. Three pointer off the make, and Viscovi takes the long rebound off the floor, and it'll be free throws coming. Wasn't pretty and certainly wasn't easy. It was about the kind of game we expected in terms of the differential when you look at the scoreboard. Two quality teams, two excellent coaches. You know they would play very close to the vest. And it took all of what Tennessee had to offer, particularly getting to the free throw line to close this one out. You've got to be impressed with Tennessee with the way their defense does not waver despite 
their offensive struggle at times. And you look across at the amount of options they have and, and their willingness to stick with Fulkerson as well. He started this game one of seven. Makes three out of his next four, not to mention going seven of eight from the stripe. And next thing you know, you, you look up and he's got 15 and 12 on a night that you don't think he really even played his best. And that's a huge compliment to their leader. Difference at the free throw line and defensive end as we thought. Classic battle offense, defense, and Keith Williams just could not keep his hot streak going. And that'll do it. Tennessee, the number 12 ranked volunteers improved to 2 0. Cincinnati now at 500, 2 2 in the early going. And sometimes it's not pretty, Dane, but all that matters is that you're on the right side of the final score. Yeah, it was ten uh, Tennessee's free versus Cincinnati's threes, and ultimately the free throw line is what got the Tennessee balls a victory. 25 of 30, no question the difference in this game. So once again, Fulkerson comes in with a double-double, 15 points, 12 rebounds. Springer nicely done with 11 and 4. Once again, the final score from Knoxville, 65 to 56. We have plenty of good action still to come on all of our SEC networks. We wish you the best for a Saturday afternoon. For Dane Bradshaw, Paul Sunderland, and our entire SEC crew, thanks so much for joining us. That'll do it from Thompson Bowling Arena.